Hi, this is Bill Deakin from FlashGamesClassroom.com and this is an accompaniment video to the tutorial I wrote for Flash and Flex Developers Magazine this month um, teaching how to create arcade games such as Asteroids in Flash and ActionScript 3. Uh, if you've not grabbed the tutorial already, you can get it from Flash and Flex Developers Magazine January 2010 edition, which is available as a free download from ffdmag.com. Um, alternatively, if you head over to my site, flashgamesclassroom.com, you can read the full tutorial there. Uh, you can also download the source file so that you can jump in and start playing with this game straight away. Um, and in about a week's time, there'll be an, another update to this game released, which will show uh, some more advanced features, how to add audio, how to add different types of asteroid objects and power-ups and kind of funky stuff like that. So if you're watching or reading this any time after around the middle of January, you can just head straight over to flashgamesclassroom.com and grab that right away. If not, then you've got a few days to play with this tutorial and try and figure some of this stuff out for yourself before downloading the updated version in uh, in next week. Okay, so we've got the game opened in Flash, and uh, let's take a quick look at how the game plays first of all, so you get an idea of what we're trying to accomplish. So the first screen we've just got our um, it's an intro screen, tells the player how to play. It's a single button which takes us into the game, and now you can see we've got a spaceship in the middle of the screen, which we can control with the left and right arrow keys to rotate. Uh, we can thrust with the up key. Okay, and of course we can fire, which uh, in this instance is using the X key. And all that does is it fires a single bullet towards our asteroids. Shoot an asteroid once, it splits into two, two smaller ones. Shoot it again, it splits into two very small ones. And if you shoot the small ones, um, I'm sure you're familiar with the game Asteroids anyway, uh, they disappear from the screen. The object, of course, is to remove all the asteroids from the screen without crashing into them like so and ending the game. Uh, every time you crash into an asteroid, you lose a life. The player starts with three lives and the game ends when all the lives are lost. And of course, if you destroy all the asteroids like so, uh, we get a new wave of asteroids, which has one more than the last one. Okay, so it's a very simple game. At the moment, there's no audio or power-ups or those sort of things, which we'll be adding next week in, uh, in a follow-up tutorial. Um, but it's enough to get started, so let's jump in and see how the game is put together. Now, I'm not going to go into the detail of how I program the game. That's covered in more than enough detail. Um, in the listing and the tutorial. So this video is really to show you how we set up this flash file. Now you can see here at the top we've got um, three keyframes on our timeline. Frame one, as you've already seen, just has this uh, is an intro screen with a button that takes us to frame two. Frame two has our control panel on the bottom which shows our score, levels and lives. And we have this movie clip uh, message which um, gives the player updates as they're playing. These uh, messages, each message at the end has a labeled frame. You can see this one has end level and we use event listeners in our class um, to check for these. So for this this one for example, end level means that the level's over, it therefore generates the next wave of asteroids. Okay, so we use that um, messages clip to control the flow of the game and of course when all of the um, lives are lost we're taken to the final game over screen which shows the score a game over message and this continue button which takes us back to frame one um, the script on this script level is very very simple I won't go into detail just now uh, but essentially it just controls the uh, is the event listeners for the buttons and also it starts the game by evoking that uh, start game method uh, but what I do need to show you is how some of our assets are set up. So if we take a look over here in the library, three types of assets that we really need to go into, the spaceship, the bullets, and the asteroids themselves. Let's take a look at the spaceship first of all, if I double click here. So this is our um, spaceship graphic. Um, it's a PNG file with um, transparent background, which is what I normally use for these type of games. Uh, but you will notice that it's masked up here. Now if I turn the mask off you'll see why. Because it's a PNG file, it's um, it's bitmapped actually, it's quite jagged. It has this aliasing down the side, uh, which is fine when it's upright, but um, Flash isn't fantastic at anti-aliasing bitmap. So when the, when the spaceship um, turns, when it rotates, we get a, a, a nasty jagged edge along there. So all I did was I've created a um, 
um, a graphic of a uh, vector graphic of the spaceship it's just marginally smaller about half a pixel smaller all the way around and we've masked that so that's going to give us a nice clean uh, clean shape as the ship rotates so that's frame one frame two is exactly the same but it also has this thrust um, image underneath for when we're pressing the thrust up key and then after that we have a short explosion animation uh, for when the uh, when the ship hits an asteroid uh, hits an asteroid and at the end again we've got a labelled frame so that we know when the explosions ended um, and we'll either end the game if there's no lives left or we'll generate a new ship in the centre of the screen um, if there's another life. Uh, if I right click on the um, asset in the library and click on linkage you'll see that it's exported for ActionScript and we've given it the class name Spaceship which allows us to control it from our class. Uh, we've done similar things with the other objects as well. We have our bullet object which is even simpler. It's just a single keyframe. Um, if I zoom in a bit you'll see all it is is a uh, a blue circular fill. It's about five pixels in diameter. Um, that's all there is to it and again it's exported for action script and this time we've given it the class name of bullet. And then we have our asteroids um, three sizes, uh, big, uh, medium and small. So this one, Big Rock, if I show you, it's uh, obviously Big Rock. We have Big Rock, Medium Rock and Small Rock as the class names. Um, now this one has two layers. You'll see again, this top layer is a PNG file with a transparent background. Uh, the reason we have two layers is to do with our collision detection. Now, a PNG file is a bitmap. It's actually rectangular, even though it has transparent background. So if our spaceship was up here in the corner, for example, um, it could be colliding with the bitmap but it wouldn't be colliding with what we actually see as the asteroid which is this section here so all I've done uh, if I just turn off this top layer you'll see that there's a circular fill which has been turned into a movie clip underneath which is very closely the same size and shape as our asteroid um, and we've just turned that into a movie clip and given it the name hit the instance name of hit and that's what we actually do our collision detection against we do it against this actual shape rather than the bounding box which gives us um, fairly accurate um, collision detection without too much overhead. Okay so there we have it that's how we set up our assets we've got um, the game set at 30 frames per second and it's a resolution of 800 by 600 that's quite simple to change uh, bearing in mind that you'll also have to set the edges of the window because our asteroids and uh, the ship wraps around the edge um, we'll need to set that in the class as well. Uh, we give the document class as asteroids and then we're going to name our class asteroids.as which is where, where we're going to write all of our um, game code in an external AS file. Uh, now I'm not going to go into detail in that just now, um, that's covered in more than enough detail in the tutorial in the magazine and the um, and on the website of flashgamesclassroom.com but hopefully that's given you a better understanding of how the um, the actual flash file set up if you've not done so already, head over to flashgamesclassroom.com, read the tutorial, download the source files, uh, and have a play with the game. I hope you have lots of fun with it. Try adding some extra functions yourself, and as I said, there'll be an update in around about a week's time where I'll show you how to add audio and some extra funky functions like power-ups, and uh, maybe we'll add a, a shield function or something like that. So I hope you've had fun. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment either at the... Um, either on the YouTube video or at Flash Games Classroom. I've been Bill Deakin, thanks for watching and I'll speak to you soon.